My favorite drills, you guys come over here and watch, okay? This is one of my favorite drills to do on maintaining the back. There's a couple things that you gotta remember when you maintain the back, when you land on your sides. We're not talking about belly down and stuff like that, we're talking about, we're, we're talking about on our sides, right? So you're gonna get up when you lose the back a different way each time. So like if I have Brock's back and I have the seatbelt, we'll call this the overhook on the back, right? It's the underhook, the one around the neck. So if I have this position, I lose my bottom hook and he gets over my hips this way, I have control of his shoulder. I can push his elbow and turn him just like we've been covering this week with the gift wrap type stuff. I'm controlling his elbow and pushing him over and controlling him, right? So when I have the seatbelt and I still have this hook here, I can keep the hook or throw it across, but then I'm able to maintain control, sit up into a chair sit, and I'm able to still take his back with my leg in, right? But if I lose the hook on this side, not on the underhook side, this is much more difficult to get up and I don't control his shoulder. So because of this, he can always maintain his back on the back, right? So like I can't force his shoulder to be pushed over. So what I have to do is dismount the hook, walk backwards, and then I turn belly down. Now I have his shoulders controlled, and I'll work my way up nice and easy. Don't crank your partner's neck. There's a few different uh, choke and neck crank options that you have. Just be careful when you come up. I'm gonna step on the overhook side to restart this process. I could start the other way, yes. I could throw it in for a particular attack the other way, but for today's drill, we're here like this. He, uses, he kills the bottom hook and moves over. Now, last time I kept this hook, I said I could also throw it across, right? So we'll do like we've been doing this week and come up into technical mount, push him over a little bit more, have my foot all the way across his body, lift him up to the other side. And of course, I could body triangle if we've been doing all week, but this stops his movement, right? So. I don't want to go to the hooks, right? <coughs> Again, seatbelt, I follow the side, he kills the bottom hook. I'm going to maintain this hook, drive into him, lift him up, chair sit him, put in my second hook. He loses the bottom hook. I can't get up this way, so I back step, go flat, walk up into him, and then I can step with my, turn a little this way up. I step with one foot curl, and the other one steps in. And okay, that slide to that side and do them on here. So this will be a continuous drill that we do for two minutes. Ready to go? Ready, set. We're gonna, we've been working on the gift wrap and variations of it, setting up the body triangle from the mount, right? Those kinds of things. Um, but just as a general concept, we went over this with the kids and the, and the other adults classes. When he's T-Rex from side control and mount. So I'm gonna show you from side control and mount and get the general concept. So, when I have my opponent T-Rex like this, I can get him gift wrapped when I get this arm across his body and I start grabbing the arm around the back of his head. Once I get this, I can take a little bit of a rest. You know, like this is a serious grip, okay? Uh, but I can't always fight with my hands and it's also good to fight with our belly, okay, and our chest. So I wanna get behind his tricep as much as I can and start to learn how to just move my opponent's arm across the body. I can push in on my toes, right? I can get higher in the mount. I can start to turn like this. This is a general fundamental movement that can be good for arm bars, S mount, technical mount, all of that kind of stuff too. But we understand these concepts. If, if Brock stays super tight with his elbows on the side of his body, this means that his wrists are weak in order to take out. Okay, if he brings his elbows close to the center of his body, okay, this means it's easy for me to push his arm across his body and start getting towards his back. I mean, this is our ultimate goal, right? Want to get over here or have the hooks in, right? So it's the same, it's the same general concept, you guys name it, from side control, okay? I could be in side control, get behind his shoulder and his chest and just push in, arms free. Push in hard enough that he turns a little bit get this position where I step into technical mount and grab his wrist and start taking, taking his back and all that good stuff, right? So I want you guys to do it from side and from back, okay? If I were to get super technical towards the camera, if I were regular side control and I wanted to tap this T-Rex arm, I would sprawl the leg that's in his head, like normal sense kilos, right? Cassie uh, Gutami uh, is a different one, 100 kilos or 10 kilos, but the kids sometimes they'll call this forklift, but and I can get behind his elbow if I need to, which will raise his shoulder. Once you get me behind his shoulder, now I can start pushing and now I'm good to step over and start going that direction, right? So if I need to really force it from side, again, I'll be in regular side control and I'll scroll the side out towards his head. Scrolling this side out doesn't help me. If you are, the movement changes on your ground, so I'm here like this. 
If I can, I'll just use my chest from the beginning. If not, I have the ability right here to give a little bit of a push. My left hand is underneath driving his armpit like a deep cross face would be anyways, right? Over here, I go to this left hand is now on his armpit. If I needed to, so I could lift with my left hand and even help chair sit him with my left hand. So that grip is there also from the beginning, right? It's hard to explain all that in the video. Uh, 180 for me, Brock. Just so that the 180 for me, there you go. So the concept is here. And from about. So you guys will go two times a piece. Not two times a piece, but two in a row. So I control mount, so I control mount. Sometimes I'll be like this, and I gotta use my belly. And I have to use my hands on my belly. Sometimes I could just use my belly. But I don't want him down there. I like it cross. Look how I can put his hand over there with my belly. Or you saw what happened a lot from side control. Brock went that planting to stop that downward movement, which gives me his wrist. And I'm already here, right? So I want to push to the points where I can force the hip crack in one way or the other. Either my belly puts his arm all the way around or he plants it. Make sense? General concept, push him over. Try to use your hands the least amount as possible. In the beginning, it's gonna be good if the training partner has their elbows here. This will make it a little easier. Like I said, when they get too down like this, I wouldn't do that. I would concentrate on moving the wrists out somehow, you know? So like, we're here like this, this guy's super T-Rexed up. Good to go? Yes. One person, two minute drills. Ready, set. Once we lose the back, we have a few different options, okay? So when I have the seat belt, I, I'm obviously gonna be on one side or the other when I have his back. When I'm on this side, I have control of his shoulder, so I'm able to get up and push into his shoulder, right? So like if I were to lose this, I could always easily chair sit and get up behind him because I could push his shoulder back forward. When I don't have that, when my seatbelt, when I land on the other side and I land like this, well now I don't have a shoulder to, to go into, right? There's a hand track system, don't get me wrong. I'm just talking about a uh, option if we lose this position on this side, okay? So a few seconds ago, we were coming out to north-south and then we were gonna belly down and start to come up and, and get the uh, back again, right? So we have the options of coming up like this. But if I have my hand, it can reach his shoulder and then cable grip, so then my elbow's hidden behind his back, I'll go down nice and slow. The whole move is dependent on my ear touching his ear. If I'm like this, he doesn't get choked. So I have to keep him folded here. So I got the seat belt. I feel like the opportunity is here. I can cover it with my hand. I get the short choke. This elbow's down his spine, so he can't grab it. I start going flat and back, and he get choked right there. That make sense? Yeah. So let's turn a little bit. So I'm here, I lost the bottom hook, I'm like, ah, I gotta scramble, get up, and I'm in this kind of a position. I start to come up, switch my grip, flatten, he gets choked. Trying to land on this elbow. As a training partner, I, I try not to go like this with my head pinched super tight, bam, <clears throat> go all the way down on Brock. You notice I coasted down to my elbow. Watch that coast again. We're here, I pull out, and instead of going arm up and totally flat like this and hurting my training partner and just aiming a little better, I'm like this. Then I can submit him with my left elbow only if I want it. Without hurting my training partner. Drop flat, pop his head off the center of the fight. <laughs> Come check us out. He forgot. He forgot. <laughs>